Do you love old cars and trucks? Join us on Bring Them Back to Life, where we search the salvage yards and backyards of America to find that gold mine of a parts car or that restorable gem in the rough. Come with us down memory lane as we elevate the status of our salvage yards to outdoor museums of automotive history. I'm Dave DeGear. We're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and my business is Broadway Truck Salvage. And what year was that Studebaker day? 40, 1940. So I saved the cab, mm -hmm. and then we put it on a one-ton Chevy frame, and we made the pickup bed and the running boards and all that to make it into a one-ton dually. Now, is that truck on site here that yeah. you can show it to us? Uh -huh. Really? Wow, that's nice. Well, see, my, my show, that's perfect, is bring them back to life, and it doesn't matter whether you keep them stock or modernize them, right. just enjoy them. We get to see it for real. 1940 Studebaker. Yeah. I always say it's the Studebaker truck that they should have made. <laughs> they never produced a one-ton dually. So. Beautiful job, Dave. Beautiful job. Thank you. Yeah. But I actually use this truck. I haul a trailer behind it and transport other vehicles around. I've been using my half-ton Dodge, but it worried me, so I wanted a heavier truck. So I built this when I'm hauling cars. <laughs> oh, it's, it's beautiful. Wild. What do you think, Ron? <laughs> that, that is awesome. That is awesome. Makes me wish I'd have cleaned the engine now. <laughs> I'll be taking this down to Scottsdale next month and uh, I'll clean the engine before we go. Right, right. Now Four, the, 454 Chevy. I was just going to say, sounded like a big block. Fuel injected, overdrive automatic, and this baby will pull a trailer. Wow. Now you've done, you've cleaned that firewall pretty much to give it that custom look in there, uh, shaved and Didn't stuff. clean it up much, modified it a little bit where the brake booster goes. Yes. Uh -huh. And then the distributor had to pull it back in just a little bit there. It already had a, a concave because it was an inline six cylinder engine originally. So it was long. Wow. Right, right. Uh-huh. Sweet. This <laughs> really, really nice. I'm How many hours did you work on it? Oh, I don't know. You didn't keep track of the hours? About yet? five years. Really? You know, not full time. Yeah. Oh, we, I we built it right here. Yeah. But I have honest work we have to do before uh -huh. or I can work on my own stuff. <laughs> that makes the money. What's the special on your third lights, Dave? Well, for safety, I put uh, third brake lights up here in the edge of the bed, and they're LED lights, but the main thing is we cut larger lenses. We had red taillight lenses, and we cut the centers out of them because it has a focusing beam, so you can see them a lot further down the road, and it focused the light straight behind it. So for those of you who saw Dave's lights come on when he stepped on the brake, that's custom third lights. And there's 
two of them. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. And then after I built my Studebaker, I repainted it to match the Studebaker. But uh, we fabricated this right here. Uh, has four wheel disc brakes and air ride suspension. So that's why it's down, the air is out of the suspension right now. But when you want to load a car, you just dump the air, there's no ramps, and you just drive on and off the trailer and then hit a switch. It carries its own air pump and, oh. and re-levels automatically. So you built it in-house, so you've got a surge brake system on it. That's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. That they use on the big boat trailers. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's, that's the look-alike for being towed with the Studebaker. Right, <laughs> and we hand fabricated those uh, fenders to fit it. Uh, yeah, I could tell. And yeah. if you have a flat, uh, it takes about uh, 45 seconds to a minute to remove a fender, yeah. uh, and they uh, come right off the top. Uh huh. Nice looking combo. Tell me about your '56 Continental. Uh, this is a, uh, a a car I bought shortly after college, and I've owned it for 46 years now. It's a 1956 Continental Mark II. Uh, it's got about a hundred thousand miles on the car. It's only got eight thousand miles on the engine and transmission. But apparently, it fell on the back burner, so it's just sitting now until I can get it out and finish painting it. I've been a Continental collector for years. I've got some other old ones. I'll show you. That rear bumper looks like it's really sound for having the exhaust come out through it. Mm -hmm. That was one of their issues, huh? Right. You can't find them. And even the rocker and underneath the uh, lower quarter, it's still got the clips for the stainless. Yeah. So you, you're way ahead of what most people have. <laughs> the, the front bumper looks the same as the rear bumper, but they have the directional lights in it. Yes, yes. Oh, that's sweet. All right. Well, that sure is fine looking under there. So the blue color under here is the original color of the car. So when I rebuilt the engine, I repainted all this to the original and I'll take the body back to the original color when I do it. So you're at a point now where you just need to modernize your brakes with the new system and do the body work. Yep. Pretty much. Wow. wow. Now what engine is this, Dave? This is a 368 and they made it for a couple of years. It was really a truck engine, but they put it in the Lincolns uh, in 56 and 57. 368. Cubic. So it has the correct engine, although it's a newer or, or rebuilt, is that what it is? That's correct. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Wow, that's, that's What is it we're going to like about this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a 1947 white COE, cab over engine truck. Yes, I see. What you're going to like is when you come around to the front. Many had that emblem on it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and the disc on the front of that emblem moves to the side, and that's the radiator filler cap is underneath that. Uh, this is probably the nicest COE truck I've had, but it's also in the worst condition. And the main reason is white used wood in their frames, so the frame, not the not the f chassis frame, but the construction of the cab is all wood with metal put around the wood nailed to it and so the wood is rotting away so it would have to be taken apart and reassembled yeah but when was the last one you and when you if you if you go on Google and you look up 1947 white you don't see very many and most of them were Leblat beer real art deco uh, semi trucks real stylized trucks and trailers that, that white had for Leblat and uh, the White Company and Hudson were working together for many years. They, they belonged to the same club. They, they kind of merged at some point, right. White and Hudson. Right. 
this is one we're building for a customer. This has been shortened a little, hasn't it? No. No? It's a short bed truck, but no, it's got a Corvette rear end, uh, Nova front suspension steering. Some other Corvette stuff, too. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little something. <laughs> Uh, and it's uh, it's a tri five, one of one of the three, but no stainless. I can't tell you. <laughs> I think it's a fifty seven. The the hood kind of gives a fifty seven, and, it, uh, and right. the hood and grill give. And this is actually a GMC. The GMC, uh huh. Yeah, 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 because it's the the big window, so it's it's either a custom or a GMC. Yeah, so. it belongs to an artist in Santa Fe, and he's going to display his artwork in this van. And then we took a Dodge passenger van, about a 1995 Dodge passenger van, and everything underneath is out of the passenger van. The steering, suspension, brakes, engine. So an artist in Santa Fe. Yeah. Do you have an idea what year this this uh, body is? Uh, it's mid-50s, I don't remember. It's in remarkably yeah. good condition. Yeah. yeah, and it's made by Grumman. It's a Grumman? It's a Grumman. Uh -huh. yeah. An early Grumman, yeah. Well, maybe not. Let it wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> these are all 1933 and 34 Ford uh, five window coupes. There's one sedan in the middle there, four door sedan. Well, that, that can't be a Ford because it's got a Chevy small block sitting there. No, that's actually a Ford, uh, the old <laughs> Y block. An old Y block. Yeah, 292. <laughs> yeah. Now, vintage era from 33, 34, do you need titles with these to, to build yes. them in uh -huh. New Mexico? Right. So, you actually have titles for no, them? No, but I can get titles on them. I should have gotten them when I bought the cars because at that time it cost about $200 to get a title. Now it's $500 and it takes about two months. But uh, no, these have the uh, original frames with the, the serial number stamped on the frame, so we can get titles here in New Mexico. Okay. Looks like that one spent some time in a state other than New Mexico. Well, <laughs> why was it in the river? <laughs> no, it, it, well. well, people who love AMC and have some, and um, I find them, I show them. I mean, here's, here's a javelin. Why, it's got a clutch pedal and a shifter on the floor. Yeah. And unlike the one I found in CTC in Texas, this one's got the one that says four speed. <laughs> that sounded nice. Yeah. And Dave said it belongs to someone else, but he thinks it's for sale, so if you want to call him, you can ask. This is a 1947 Lincoln Continental Coupe V12 engine. I'm the third owner of this car uh, and it has 54,000 original miles. It's an all original surviving car. Yes, sir. Six on each side. And it doesn't sleep alone. That's nice. And it's a, uh, uh, it's a two door. Yep. Two door. All the Continentals were two doors. Yep. Uh, okay. This, this is a coupe, and they had the Cabriolet convertibles. Right. Uh huh. It has. 
push button door to open it. This is all the original interior. Some of the threads dried out. They were cotton threads on the corner of the seat and they popped, but nothing is torn right. on the interior. Now, in, in this era, uh, what year did you say this one is? 47. 47. Uh, was Lincoln offering the automatic transmission then? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Is, what, what is this one? This is a standard. This is a standard. It's a three-speed standard with overdrive. With, okay. Uh-huh. Still sounds great shutting the door, you know? has a New Jersey plate on it from 47. It was sold new in New Jersey. And then uh, a friend of mine that I bought it from uh, bought it in 1952. And he lived in New Jersey, but I met him in Arizona and the car had been moved out there. Wow. And I bought it in 98, so he owned it 47 years. Uh, she's really sweet, just has some patina from age. It's mm -hmm. the years that it was used. Right. Yeah. Right. And this is the same car, but an older version. This is 1941. Uh, Continental came out in 1940 and okay. looked very much like this. Very slight trim difference, 40 and 41. And then in 42, they went wider on the fenders, same body, same doors. But this also is a V12 car. For a month and a half, and then everything went to the Army. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So... Yeah, this is one of the one of the last ones before the war, right here. Right, and this one uh, was very weathered when I found it right here in Albuquerque, and so I uh, it had been hit in the front, but there were replacement grills came with it, oh. and so mm -hmm. I had the body straightened out in the front, and it's just in a yellow primer now just to preserve it. No, that's oh. that's an unusual thing to see a windshield that's split in two thirds, one third, rather than up the middle. <laughs> Flat glass, so it's cheap to cheap. Right, to but that out. was was that the option that was original? No, no, it's flat. It just broke there. It broke there. Yeah. So you know, it looks looks it's, like it might be. It's a split. It's a split, it's a split windshield. Right? <laughs> it's, and it's literally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the same the same model, everything. Yeah. Same windshield. All that. Another push button too. Uh, yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, the, the, the 1940, the first one had a regular handle, and oh. then 41 they went to the push button. And you'll see the interior is pretty bad in this one. This is out, out in the weather, but in New Mexico they don't rust, they just dry out. They do. They do. They, they get a little patina from the sun. <laughs> and this is the Continental kit for that car. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, aftermarket or no, OEM? It's a, it's a, it's yeah, a, Mercury yeah. Products. Mm -hmm. yeah. That box is worth money by itself. There you go. <laughs> goes with, goes don't, with the car. Don't throw it away. So, so <laughs> do, do you have this one in, in mind to sell or you want to finish? Or I, I have everything in mind to sell. Okay. Yeah. Well. No, I'm, I'm retiring. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and I, I'm just the caretaker of these cars now, waiting for the next person. Oh, well that's a beautiful line. Yep. Mm -hmm. This one I don't know if you'll be able to see in here. That's no, no. all the original carpeting in there, and up under the deck lid here. Oh, uh -huh. the same, yes. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's a sweet ride. Here was the thing. They, they made Lincoln for years, and then in 1940, they came out with this model that was called the Continental. Okay. So they still made Lincoln Zephyr, and, and, uh, but they brought out Continental from 1940 through 1948. Okay. Then they dropped the Continental, and then they were just Lincolns again. Lincoln. And then in 1956, when the Mark II came out, that was a separate division. That was the Continental Division of Ford Motor Company for two years, uh -huh. 56 and 57. Then after that, then they became Lincoln Continental. Oh, cool. well, let me see what a windshield's supposed to look like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. All one piece, yeah. okay. I, I might have to leave that in, I'll tell my grass. No, don't edit it, that was cute. <laughs> Add something to it when you're, you're a human. Oh, hello over there. 
all you people at home are doing the fun stuff with the Bondo, the filler. This is stuff that never ends. You gotta put it on and put it on and put it on and put it on. I should probably have a thicker spreader considering the area we're gonna be doing. As you watch, I'm just gonna gradually apply the Bondo. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. You apply it just to get it over the surface. And yes, for you who are mocking me right now, I should have a Bondo board, not a piece of cardboard, but it works. For this job, a six inch spreader would be a lot better. I'm actually kind of crazy for using a little one. But, using what we have here, bring it back to life, because this is a low budget do it yourself project. If you guys are watching at home, if you've ever applied Bonda before, you know what I'm going through right now. not real hard but at the same time you want to apply it the best you can because uh, in the long run it is 100% a lot easier to sand off smooth Bondo than clumpy big pieces of Bondo And this is going to be done step by step over pretty much the entire rear quarter, right? Yep, every part of the rear quarter we have to go over and over and over. We'll be mixing up a lot of Bondo tonight. Because these cars did not have small quarter panels, if you're wondering. You can see at home I have a little bit of a hole here which I'm going to have to fill. Not a very big one, but if you wonder what I'm doing, I'm pulling it down so I can bring some of the material up to this little hole I got here to try to finish it off. Now when you're this far, you take a new spreader and you just try to mold what you can in. Because all this is going to get overlapped here in a minute with new coats of Bondo. Remember, the trick to Bondo is you don't have to go crazy and go a whole bunch. You just want enough to cover. You can always add or take away. If you're not careful, you can sand down to bare, bare metal again. And all your hard body work will be all gone. You can see at home I have a little bit of a hole here. I always go down first when I'm doing Bondo because which way does gravity go when you drop a ball? It goes down. And going down will help it pull in, fill in any imperfections. And then I go up to taper it to make it stronger because then it locks together. You guys at home can see my hole is now straight which will give me a nice taper and a nice line to run through now all this can be sanded down now we got to apply Bondo from the other quarter back now I'm gonna make a couple more passes here and straighten out my Bondo board now this is nice light finesse not a lot of pressure because you don't want to ruin what you just did. All you're doing here is making the lines a little smoother so that you can actually sand them out and you're not sitting there for days. Bondo's great. You can make it any shape or color you want. It's like being a kid again, playing with Play Doh. The Bondo just costs a little bit more for all you folks at home that don't know. Alright, that's our first cut. And I dropped that. 
plastic is no good. So if you take a good look right here, the corp accomplished what is just a little bit of body work, which will make it smooth. And now we got to finish doing the rest of the quarter panel. And at the, after that point, we're going to let it dry for about an hour or so. And we're going to take 80 grit sandpaper with a long board. The long board sandpaper is going to allow us to not get waves and curves. And we're going to run it down and just nice and slow go over it. And then I'll show you in a little bit later film video, we're going to take a straight edge, which is a straight piece of steel, which will be a ruler, uh, tape measure, not tape measure, um, a measuring stick, something with a straight piece of steel that can go down the body lines to make sure that the curves are okay and it's not big whoops and dips. Um, it takes a long time to get this right and years to perfect. I'm still not that good at it. I try, but it takes a long time. So. Hey, 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 you gonna support us? We just supported Van Gogh. See the pin? Show the pin. They're the best. Yep. That's the balloon.